Thanks for tuning in. I am your host, Following Christ. Don't forget to please subscribe to this channel if you are new. Don't forget to hit the bell icon once you have subscribed so that you are constantly notified as new content is available. Don't forget to like these videos and share them with your family and friends, your co-workers, and whoever else you think may like them. Don't forget to also like us on Facebook at the name The Seal of God Network, as well as The Watchman for Christ. And I pose a question for you today. How can we know what's coming in the world that we live in? Have you ever wondered what's going to happen to our world? Everyone seems to have their ideas. But is there something or anything that's truly trustworthy? Have you ever heard or what if I told you there is a way to understand what's coming in our world? What if I told you that everything that is happening and will happen has already happened at least in principle? I know, I know, you probably tell me, but we have all these technological advancements that our predecessors didn't have, and we seemingly have more intellect and knowledge than they do, right? Have you ever heard of the expression that history repeats itself? Well, even in this day of alleged knowledge and technological progress, we are still, much like our forefathers and ancestors, stunted by sin and limited in our mental capacities and reasoning abilities. If you look in the book Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse number 15, we are instructed that that which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. God is instructing us here that there is nothing happening currently in the realm of spiritual affairs and the prophetic players that hasn't happened in our world prior. And God desires us to have an account of what has happened in the past history, for it will repeat itself. This is why it is recorded earlier in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number one and verse nine, that the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. The brothers and sisters, my friends, these things aren't new concepts or breakthrough ideas like many may tell you. These fanciful ideas of RFID chips put into people's hands and barcodes on the foreheads. All these end of the world date settings. Believing salvation somehow still revolves around literal Israel. You know, the adversary, Satan, enemy of God has always 
throughout history had his ways and ideas to distract the masses from seeking God's truth. Be it through things like idolatry, or even popular secular theory. And many, many, many more other means. Many believe especially among self-proclaimed practicing Christians, that any ideas or teachings speaking in which they think is about or what they presume is about in a negative fashion, a certain system or hierarchy is a false teaching of hate and misrepresentation. Sadly, if we'd only do as God has asked and instructed us and take an account of history, we know that these ideas aren't new. For instance, my friends, if you happen to know anything about Protestant history or the Reformation, you should know a man by the name of Martin Luther. Martin Luther is actually the father of the Lutheran Church. Martin Luther declared, we here are of the conviction that the papacy is the seat of the true real antichrist. If you do not contend with your whole heart against the impious government of the Pope, you cannot be saved. Whoever takes delight in the religion and worship of the Pope will be eternally lost in the world to come. If you reject the Pope, you must expect to incur every kind of danger, even to lose your life. But it is far better to be exposed to such perils in this world than to keep silent. So long as I live, I will denounce to my brothers who are with us, should fall back like the rest into the bottomless pit. John Wycliffe, English theologian, a reformer, and promoter of the first complete translation of the Bible into English said, when the Western church was divided for about 40 years between two rival popes, one in Rome and the other in Adam, France, each pope called the other pope Antichrist. Wycliffe is reputed to have regarded them as both being right. Two halves of Antichrist, making of the perfect man of sin between them. We suppose that Antichrist, the head of all these evil men, is the Pope of Rome. William Tyndale, an English scholar who became a leading figure Protestant Reformation, and well known for his translation of the Bible into English, said this, the Pope's forbidding matrimony and to eat of meats created of God for man's use, which is devilish doctrine by Paul's prophecy, are tokens good enough that he is the right Antichrist, and his doctrines sprung of the devil in accordance to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, 
wrote that he, the Pope, is in an emphatical sense the man of sin, as he increases all manner of sin above measure. And he is, too, properly styled the son of perdition, as he has caused the death of numberless multitudes, both of his opposers and followers. He it is that exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, claiming the highest power and highest honor, claiming the prerogatives which belong to God alone. And finally, Sir Isaac Newton, revered for his scientific finding on gravity and discovery of calculus, and who is widely recognized as one of the most influential scientists and key figure in the scientific revolution. Sir Isaac Newton taught that the Church of Rome was the little horn of Daniel. Sir Isaac Newton says, but it, the little horn, was a kingdom of a different kind from the other ten kingdoms. By its eyes it was a seer, and by its mouth speaking great things and changing times and laws. It was a prophet as well as a king. And such a seer, a prophet and a king, is the Church of Rome. A seer is a bishop in the literal sense of the word. And this church claims a universal bisphoric or bisopric. With his mouth, he gives laws to kings and nations of the world and pretends to infallibility and that his dictates are binding to the whole world, which is to be a prophet in the highest degree. My friends, the only way for one to know that these things were even said by these men the only way to know what is truly coming upon our world is by studying the Bible and history in accordance with Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 4 to 15. The Bible itself admonishes the true seeker of the word of God for wisdom and direction to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Christ himself has told us in accordance with John chapter 14 and verse 29, and now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe. But many don't understand is that when we reject truth, whether it's pleasant to us or not, we are ultimately and actually rejecting Christ. For it is written in John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For it is God's desire to bring us all knowledge and truth. But if we reject this knowledge, my friends, God will have no choice but to also reject us. For it is written in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. My friends, I implore you to no longer simply accept what you hear, or whatever thing may be popular, but to rather research everything.
for truth. As it is written by the prophet Jeremiah, and ye shall seek me, and ye shall find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Truth is stranger than fiction. And no matter how one may feel about it, whether they accept it or like it, truth always stays true. This is following Christ. Brothers and sisters, God bless you. It's time to wake up.